Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Let's pretty up the base. First thing is I want to fill in this roof. So let's make some more thatch. I just did a nice big harvest of wheat. Five pieces of thatch, that should do. Nice. Alright, so I, <laughs> I want to do a bunch of um, chisel and bits stuff, but um, before doing that, bits are kind of un... well, actually, they're not kind of, they're absolutely very, very unwieldy. Because it divides each block into 16 by 16, if you take out just a chunk of a block, you end up with just hundreds and thousands of bits. So, um, if you want to do it without just completely spamming your inventory with garbage, then you're going to want to make a bit bag, which requires a bit of wool, and a little tiny chiseled bit of stone. But that's easy. Uh, but the wool I don't have. I think I have one piece of black wool and then using the cotton that I had and the cotton that I gathered I managed to make two more pieces but that's obviously not enough. So we need to go looking for sheep. I almost want to capture some sheep but I've still got the cows that are in the golden lassos which reminds me I haven't made a pen for the cows. Eh, I'll do that at some point. So yeah let's go find sheep. I guess I'll just mark them on the map so I know where to come back for them later. When I do want to make some sort of a sheep pen. Aha! Took me a while, but I see one sheep on the map. I hope there's more. It's almost nighttime. Hope it doesn't become completely dark. Oh god, it's becoming completely dark. I don't have any torches on me! Do I? I also don't have any coal. Uh-oh. Huh. Okay, you know what? I can still do this. It's alright. I can see name tags. Even though I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. Oops. Okay, this can work. Ten wool. Alright, I'll take it. Let's hope I can find my boat. Here! I think I found it. I can't see it, but the tooltip says it's a boat. It's a boat! It's a boat! Oh! Never, ever again am I traveling without a torch. Alright, we're back to safety. Let's make that bit bag. And I'll show you how it works. So we have the wool, uh, but we're going to need a bit of stone. Quite literally, a bit of stone. Switch it to single bit mode. Just take one from like here. There we go. And the rest of this thing, I'm just gonna... Uh, actually, no, I'll leave it for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna show you something with it. So, we should be able to construct it now. Yep. Right. So here's how it is when you don't have a bit bag. Let's say I just want to, like, eat this whole thing. And just turn it all into bits so that I can place them somewhere. A lot of bits. Fill up my inventory, and then there's a just a crap ton on the ground just from one block. So imagine if I went to go and, you know, take away the floor of this place like I'm going to do. That would be a lot of bits. But with the bit bag... Only one stack will go into your normal inventory, and that's just so you can actually place the bits. That's how you place bits, by the way. The chisel itself is for taking away bits, but if you select the bits themselves, you can place them using the same thing. Okay, that's weird. Um, there's a add-on mod to chisel and bits that allows you to throw bits, but the key to throw bits is also the exact same key as what it is to open the menu, so that's <laughs> something I should probably reassign if I want to place bits in the world. Ah, crap. Uh, hold on. There, I assigned the menu to something sensible, and I also assigned a nice hotkey for undo. You can, of course, do undo just by going here, but undo is something you're going to want to do probably quite a bit. I'm just going to break this garbage. Delete those little bits. And yeah, if you take a look at the bit bag itself, it stores everything other than the one stack that you've got. Oh, whoa. This is... Different? Different, but very welcome. 
I don't know if this is a config sort of thing or if maybe it's changed with a different version, but whatever version of chisel and bits I'm used to, um, normally each stack is limited to 512, I believe, per stack, compared to the default in your inventory of bits, which is 64 per stack. So it held a lot more, but it was still, you know, when you go to take away a lot of bits, they add up and it would fill up relatively quickly, but still a lot slower than your inventory. But this is holding 4,000 in one slot. That is very cool. All right. I wonder what that limit is. Could it be practically unlimited? Let's find out. So let's start to do some chiseling bits work. Gonna make this look less blocky and more like, uh, more like the bed. Yeah, so it looks like it allows you to store 4,000 per stack, which is really nice. Although you can still see, even having just taken off this one line here from underneath, I've already filled up four stacks worth, so I'm going to need to delete a lot, probably. Uh, but anyway, so I was taking away these... Whoops. That's the wrong chisel. I just changed the style of that one. Anyway, so I was taking these bits away, and I could just manually do them all like this. I meant that to be a one half size. But I think there's a faster way. There's You can make uh, blueprints, basically. Or positive chisel designs, or there's also negative chisel designs. So I'm going to make a positive chisel design, paper, lapis, and a bucket of water. And I think this is going to allow me to do something pretty cool. So I think I can make a copy of this. Like that. And then I can set this to different modes to how I want to place this in the world. Replace, impose, placement, or additive. So I'm going to replace. It's going to try to replace whatever block is there with this other version. Yeah. Way, way faster. So I can do it on a per block basis. And I think it just basically gets rid of the bits or adds bits as needed. So since this is just a half tall thing, it's just removing the bottom half of the bits and just putting them in this bag automatically, as if I had just used the chisel tool itself. There we go. Looking a lot better. Also did the same to the kitchen over here. Let's make some stairs using chisel and bits as well. Um, should probably put some dirt down here. for the stairs to actually go on. I'm going to try a different design. See if it looks good to have something that looks a little bit different. A little bit of a different wood texture. Let's see how this looks. Yeah. Alright, I think that could work. Now I got stairs. They're kind of big steps, though. I could go in smaller increments, but... Nah. This is fine. Oh, yeah, let's actually make this corner look nice, too. Um, yeah. Nice. Looks like a proper building. Especially the roof. So let's do the same here. Add in some stairs. There we go. Nice. Now let's make this whole thing look a bit less boxy. Um, I'm thinking, what if I just take away the corner? That looks a lot better already, just, just having done that. Yeah, look at how much better this looks. If you just kind of take away the corners and just smooth that out a bit, it gives it some actual depth. If you do that and take away the top corner. Like, that looks so much better. Let's see if I can do a bit more. I'm going to try taking off the top like this, too. Yeah, look at that. That looks a thousand times better. I wonder if I should do anything similar here. Ah, the thing is, I don't really want to, like, take away this, for example. I 
that just looks weird. I could take away that, but then, like, it's not really connected there. I think I should probably... Leave that alone. Thank God for undo. So I'm not sure if there's anything I would want to do... ...to this place that I really could do that would look right. Yeah, I think I'll leave that as it is, just to finish the roof. I mean, what am I talking about? The roof's already finished. But this place... Ah, beautiful! Look at my woodwork. You know, I changed my mind about not wanting this place to have any windows. I think I actually can make it work. Let's put a little window... Yeah. Perfect. So if you find your bit bag filled up with a bunch of stuff that you don't want, you can empty it just by double-clicking this button. That'll delete all the contents, and if you just want to delete something specific, just one type in it, you can... Um, you can... I think you, like, grab the bits and then click on the trash can with the type of thing you want to... delete? And that'll delete all of that kind, I think? Generally, I don't need the bits to make other stuff, though, so I just delete them all. Anyway, let's also smooth this out a bit. Just out of curiosity, how would this look if instead of doing half size cubes, what if I did smaller increments, like... Like that. Does that look better? Or is it just more work? I don't really want an inconsistent style. I should pick one or the other. Um, let's try it. I think I can wipe... Yeah, so I can wipe my chisel design from this thing just by putting in a crafting window. I get a blank one. So then I could copy this. like how it looks a lot. I think I prefer that over the quarter size or half size blocks. Okay, I'm going to switch over to this. Converted them over. Let's smooth out some of this, some of these corners. There. A bit more interesting looking. Nothing amazing, but it's alright looking. Let's do this one too. Much better. <laughs> what are these mushrooms doing? Get out of there, silly. Okay, well, I'm feeling pretty good about how my base looks. Like, it actually looks pretty damn good. It looks so much better now that I've done the chiseling bit stuff and added stairs. Oh yeah, uh, one more thing I forgot to do. All the grass is spread, so now I can make paths. I should probably actually make... like, dirt steps, huh? Hmm... Uh, the bad... Uh, the annoying thing about dirt steps, though, is that how would I get this grass path look on steps? I don't even know if that's possible, and if it is, it'd probably be pretty annoying. Hmm. Well, for now... Gonna move these out of the way. And I'll just add a simple path. I'm trying to avoid the path looking too, just like, straight. Make it look a little bit more natural. bonus stats. And probably an extra modifier. Could put five modifiers on this thing. There, check it out. Got a nice little farm with all our worms going. Follow the grass path. Well, I guess it's not grassy anymore, is it? It says grass path, but it really doesn't look grassy. Well, technically, follow the grass path. 
I wish this section wasn't so straight, but it's kind of just the way I dug it out, so I guess I'll stick with it. Oh yeah, I need a pathway over there. So this can't be puzzle. Can't make a path out of puzzle. So I'm going to have to wait for that to spread before I can do it, but there will be a path going over there. Nice path that goes here. Path that goes over here to the machinery. Nice stairs. I'm liking it. Alright, I think I've focused enough on doing visual things. Let's get into some tech. We've got a quest to get two carbon plates. So carbon plates are made by uh, macerating coal, which gives you coal dust. Coal dust in the 2x2 pattern gives you raw carbon fibers. Two carbon fibers together gives you a raw carbon mesh. Toss that carbon mesh in the compressor, and you get a carbon plate. So that's going to finish off this quest, because we already made the compressor, obviously. Got a block of redstone, which is very nice, because we, I think, have basically no redstone at the moment. Advanced alloy or carbon plate? I, I know how to make carbon plates since I made them for the quest. I don't know what advanced alloy is. Or what it's used for. Oh, right. Mixed metal ingot made from all sorts of things. Iron, bronze, and tin all together. That's a lot. That's a lot of material, actually. What's it used for? Reinforced glass. Advanced miner. Miner, miner. What about just a normal miner? Can we make this? Diamond chest. I mean, it's doable. I don't know if I have the diamonds at the moment, but uh, I'm trying to think of, you know, I've been looking for a way to mine more easily. And I've never used the miner before, but I was looking at the RF Tools Builder, which is very powerful, but that's obviously gated off as a late game thing because of the materials that it requires. So anyway, back to the miner. Electronic circuits, we can do that. Basic machine casing, we can do that. Diamond chest, we can do that. Laser focus matrix. Blocker redstone, sure. Reactor glass, hmm. Reactor frame. Tongue steel, ludicrite. No. For that, we need like the metal alloy or something. Okay, so yeah, we definitely can't make the miner yet. We need to get into rock hounding. Yeah, we really need to get into rock hounding. Anyway, let's complete this quest, grab the advanced alloy. And then one of the quests that unlocks is the whole Tinker's thing, which we've done long, long ago. Sharpening kit, pickaxe head cast. I'd just like to point out that that paper sharpening kit is, one, a paper airplane, and two, how is paper supposed to sharpen anything? That doesn't make any sense. Titanium. Eh, sure. Okay. Now let's get to something actually new. <laughs> Still thinks I can just, just jump in and make the tool forge. Nah, that's not happening. So I could go this route and I can make the crusher, which is from immersive engineering. It's kind of like the macerator here, except bigger and cooler and way better. And yeah, it's pretty awesome. But the thing I keep seeing come up again and again to really unlock all sorts of potential and what I can make is I really need to get into rock hounding. Like, super bad. I don't think rock hounding is actually here, though. No, rock hounding isn't in this quest list. Alright, I'm going to trust this quest list and say that rock hounding is meant to something you're meant to get into later. And let's get into embers. Right, well, to get into embers, one of the things I'm going to need is quite a bit more iron. And I have very little left. I've got 11 iron ingots, and then I don't... Yeah, I don't even have any iron plates left here. So I need to go get more iron from the mining dimension. But to do that, I need to actually set up the mining dimension portal again. And I also need to set up the bloomeries once I actually have all the stuff in the mining dimension. So let's get the bloomeries ready and waiting for when I come back. There we go. Got the bloomeries set up in the exact same way all the other ones are. Also put some... 
Wait. It. Oh! It sucked the forge hammers out. Hmm. Interesting. So these aren't too intelligent about what they output. They output everything, not just whatever goes into this slot. Um, let me see if I can make some item filters. Redstone, stick, string. I don't know if I can do that actually, because I have like almost no redstone, and I think I just use most of it up making more transfer nodes. Yeah, <laughs> I have enough to, I think, make one item filter. Hmm. Okay, well, for now, I'm just going to disconnect those. It's not that big of a deal. Each one can hold a full stack of iron ingots. Uh, but later on, I'll try to make an item filter or something to solve that. Alright, let's figure out a place to put the mining dimension, and I think... I think it should be a place that doesn't just hold the mining dimension, but also all the other portals, like the nether portal. So where should I put it? Yeah, this feels like the right place. It's a little bit away from the base, so that any noises the portals make, especially the nether, won't be annoying. But there's something I like about this path up. You see up there, there's like a nice little straight shot. Maybe this is a little bit in the way. It's like a straight shot up, and it just looks kind of, I don't know, uh, imposing. Feels right to put them here. I, I think I should make some sort of a pathway eventually that goes up here. Yeah, let's just toss it down here. I'll put a little bit off to the side so the nether portal can be next to it. Oh, I made it too big again. Ah, I always do that. Oh, hello. It's a blizz. They are not friendly. Throw snowballs at you. Blizzrod. I think that'll be important for some stuff. Can make blizz powder with it. Which is used for cryothium dust. Can make jelly cryothium, which is a very good thing that you can use to cool a reactor, for example. It's good as a coolant. Does this mod pack actually have reactor stuff? Yeah, it does. Okay. But I'm sure that's far in the future, so don't worry about it. But probably eventually we'll end up making a reactor. Okay, let's get some iron. And this will be a good opportunity for me to show you how I was getting that iron before. I know I, I think I mentioned how I was getting all that uh, bog iron, but I'll actually show you this time. Whoa. That's different. Um, I think maybe the mining dimension was reset. Normally it spawns me, you know, my usual place down below, but now I'm on the overworld. Interesting. Hmm. Well, of course, there's just the goethite iron that's on the surface, which is pretty good stuff. Definitely worth getting it, but it doesn't occur in huge chunks. Check out this. Frost Garden from Pam's Harvest Craft. I think that'll have different types of seeds. What are those? Oats, beet, celery, those are all new. Sweet. Ooh, some more. Beet, celery, cabbage, cauliflower. Raspberry, peas, oh, so many new things. So many new recipes. Also, I'm having absolutely terrible luck finding an entrance to some underground place. Most of these things here are just why is there a torch? Why 
Why is there a torch? That's creepy as hell. <clears throat> anyway. Most of them are just places that go to water. Oh, here we go. Alright, so maybe this will show you what the bog iron looks like. It looks very, very similar to the peat coal ore. It's just like a... Well, you'll see it. It's very pale. That doesn't go anywhere. Let's hope this way does. Or this way. Let's place over that way, if I want to dig. Terrible luck. Or maybe this is normal luck and I was just lucky before. It's appetite. Oh, here we go. Here's bog iron. Yeah, so it's a weird color, but it usually occurs in quite large veins. Even that one was pretty decent size, but that was kind of on the small side. Uh, appetite ore, by the way, gives you, if you're curious, it gives you appetite. Which is used in a forestry mod, and it basically becomes a fertilizer. And it's used for auto farming and stuff like that. You find it in absolutely massive veins like this. Quite easy to find. I think I've already got some built up, so no need to get it. Ah, here's some more. Here's some more. Yeah, you can see it's pretty common in areas like this. And each one gives you... 300 millibuckets. Which is three-fifths of an ingot. Not bad. Yeah, here's a bunch more. I don't know what this Sarah Blossom is from Ars Magica is for, but it's kind of shiny and I don't think I've seen it before. And it looks rare. What's that used in? Crystal Wrench. Desert Nova, Ventium Dust. I could totally make this. I mean, there's a Desert Nova right there. But, um, what's a Crystal Wrench? What's that used for? We just don't know. Also, I was taking a look at the map and I realized that this is actually the same map. It hasn't been reset. Here's where I am. Oops. Here's where I've explored before. It's just for whatever reason. I guess just because it... Maybe it just spawns a random portal if you make a new portal. Oh, ancient golem. Hello. Ah. I was reading about them. Apparently, there's something you can get from them. That's equivalent to, like, the, the manual for the Embers mod. The Ancient Golem is apparently from the Embers mod, by the way. Um, but to do it, you have to get the killing blow on them with a pickaxe. But not a Tinker's pickaxe, a normal pickaxe. So... I have, like, no inventory space. Do I have any sticks? No. I need to run. I need some inventory space. Oh, come on. Actually, I think what I'll do is just dump everything. Simple double right click. Yep, lots of space. Okay. One, two, three. Stick, stick, sticks. Run. Kill it with a pickaxe. Yeah, there we go. Eye of the Ancients. Oh, apparently that's needed for a research table as well. But I think the eye itself, I think it said if you use it on a block from embers, it'll tell you about it. So, like, if I place this core stone down... Oh, whoa, look at that. 
That's a cool effect. Ancient brown stone has a composition that cannot be identified. Oh, look at the animation, too. Look at the icon for it. It's got like a little eye that opens up when you mouse over something you can, you can get information on. Very cool. Alright, this has taken an extremely long amount of time to make all these things that I need for embers, and I'm pretty sure this isn't quite everything. I think it's all the basic stuff, but I think I need some pipes and some other little extra things, but anyway. So, we need a compass. Which goes here, that makes a mechanical core. Lead plate, some iron, compass, mechanical core. Mechanical core goes here along with some kamenite brick stairs, copper and iron to make an ember bore. That's like the heart of the machine, I think. Copper, iron, plates and furnace to make the ember activator. Iron, kamenite plate and copper to make ember emitters. All this stuff <laughs> to make cinder plinth. And no, I don't really know how all this stuff works together exactly. All this stuff to make ember receptor. And this stuff to make bin. Okay, I think that's most of the basics. There's one thing I'm missing though. I'm pretty sure you need the Tinker's Hammer, which is kind of a funny name. It's not from Tinker's Construct. It's from Embers. And I think you need that to, um, to properly use the mod. Because I think you have to assign Ember Emitters to Ember Receptors, and I think you need to use the Tinker's Hammer to do that. And for that, I need Impregnated Sticks, which come from a Carpenter. Put a couple logs of wood in there. And it'll make you Impregnated Sticks, but you also need 100 millibuckets of Seed Oil. So to do that, I set up the squeezer and the carpenter over here, and instead of the mechanical, uh, what's it called, the clockwork thing, like the hand-powered RF thing, instead of that, of course, I hooked it up to the actual power system. And these use RF, not EU, so I just added an extra, an extra pole here. That connects to there. So that connects to this whole EU station, and it also connects to this pole here. I can use RF or EU. I've got that hooked up. Um, I guess I'll put the wood in there. Oh, whoops. Now it just needs the seed oil, which I've made in a squeezer, but I can't take that out by the bucket full. The bucket can only take a, a thousand millibuckets at one time, a full bucket. So I'm hoping I can suck it out with the fluid tank and then push it into the carpenter. Let's see. Pull? Yeah, pulled it in. Good. Push, and pushed it out. Sweet. Oh, and it already made it. And that should be everything we need to make the hammer. Sleepy time. Wakey time. Okay, now I think we have everything. So a couple more things that I think I probably should make is mechanical pump and iron pipe. I don't think I need these. I'm pretty sure that I can actually just use the extra utility transfer nodes and stuff. I don't think I have to use the transfer system from within embers, but I figure I probably should because this stuff isn't too hard to make. Oh, except, hmm, redstone. I have like no redstone still. I was just thinking it would look better because it would be in the same aesthetic as everything else, but maybe I actually won't because I don't really have any redstone. I have three. It's very sad. <laughs> Alright, that took pretty much forever, so I'm not going to set up embers this episode. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and in the next episode, I'm going to set up embers. <laughs>